All right, hey, look, listen, okay, l listen, listen here for a second, all right? I know you're mad, I know you think this is stupid, and I agree, most of the time I think it's really, really dumb when the next iPhone for 2020, you know, it hasn't come out yet, and yet we're already talking about the 2021 iPhone. Well, here's why I'm making a bit of an exception to the rule. It's mainly because 2020, you know, bump a year lots of weird stuff lots of delays lots of pushback and i think that apple still prefers in the future for iphones to be unveiled and ship in september they just couldn't do it this year because of the pandemic and everything which means that we will likely see the iphone 13 or the iphone 12 s in september of 2021 and you know what that means it means that the iphones we're talking about in today's video are less than a year away they're not over a year away like it would be if we were making this video back in august but we're not we're still doing it in October and for that reason I say it's fair game because we've only got 11 months to go until the 2021 iPhone event that is of course assuming they don't delay the event next year for whatever reason when 2022 the squeak will begins without further ado let's begin these leaks are coming from Ross Young, who has a pretty reliable track record when it comes to predicting display specifications, and there's nothing incredibly surprising about these leaks, but just something I feel like you guys should be aware of, because while one half of you will say 120 hertz doesn't matter, and the other half of you will say I'm not getting this year's iPhone unless it has 120 hertz, this is about that. And of course, it's next year. So, he's saying that the pro iPhones in 2021 will be rocking that LTPO display OLED panel that we wanted to see in this year's iPhone, but Apple just couldn't swing or Samsung couldn't produce enough of them. But 120 hertz variable refresh rate displays should be coming next year, which I know is about a year or two late, not as early as we would have liked them, but that's what the current rumors are. And he also briefly mentioned the camera systems on the non-pro iPhones getting updated next year as well. So in case you were somewhat not aware, the basic iPhone 12s this year, the ones that'll probably be unveiled in just a couple weeks now, those are essentially going to have very similar camera systems to the iPhone 11, which is just one ultra wide, one standard. But in 2021, they want to start bringing the triple camera system to the entire lineup. So now even the mini one, which I thought was interesting, even the 5.4 inch model will be getting a triple camera system to have the same camera system as the 12 Pro Max. Though he did mention no LiDAR, so I guess it's not an exact carbon cut copy. They're not entirely sure if they want to bring LiDAR to the rest of the lineup or if they want LiDAR to be some type of exclusive pro feature and if it is may i just say it better have something aside from just the gimmicky ar demos we saw on the ipad pro this year because if that's going to be our deciding factor next year between getting a regular iphone 12s and a 12s pro max man they're going to have to do something with the naming that just does not sound right but if the big difference in the cameras between these two phones is that one of them allows you to do the gimmicky ar demos and the other one can still do ar just not quite as well that's pretty dumb in my opinion. So what I'm hoping this means is that at some point in the next year or so, we can actually see some features being added with LiDAR that allow for, I don't know, way better portrait mode or portrait mode video or something like that. Some type of feature that can make the pro camera stand aside and be noticeably better than the standard cameras that you get with the regular iPhone 11 or this year 12 or next year 12S. We're not anywhere near close having an idea what Apple's going to name or brand next year's iPhone. Personally, given how Ross Young is talking about how next year's models are going to be the same displays, same form factors that we're getting this year. To me, sounds very much like an S year, you know, not a major upgrade, not a full number upgrade. But at the same time, fitting an S into the current naming scheme just sounds horrible. 12S is fine, I guess. But once you start getting into 12S Pro or 12S Pro Max, I don't know, maybe they could drop the number 12 for the just the Pro iPhones and just have iPhone Pro and iPhone Pro Max or something like that because, you know, they don't have the numbers around for the iPad Pros or the MacBook Pros. They just update them and we kind of refer to them by their screen size or their year. And normally that doesn't come off as well in marketing, but it's mainly a tech community based phone. You know, it's meant to have the better specs so the tech community can understand the confused naming. You know, it's not that hard. But for the everyday standard phone that everyone's going to end up buying, sure, 12S and 12S Mini, I guess is fine. And the other interesting tidbit Ross Young referenced, and he has a lot of contacts within display supply 
chain manufacturing and that kind of thing is that you should not expect a third generation iPhone SE next year, which has been a rumor, has been somewhat of a leak floating around for a while is that some people were thinking at some point in 2021, probably in the first quarter or so, Apple would be working on a follow-up, a successor to the just released iPhone SE second generation, which if you've watched my videos before, you know, I immediately had some doubts about that because I don't feel like the iPhone SE is somewhat of a regular upgrade. I don't think that's something Apple wants to be dropping annually. And while it did sound interesting, like having Touch ID and the power button, a 6.1 inch liquid retina, so it would still be an LCD, but just be significantly more affordable and still have that futuristic look without having the expensive components on the inside. Yeah, it would be interesting if Apple did that, but didn't really sound like something we would see in 2021. Ross Young is saying we shouldn't expect that third generation SE until 2022. So that sounds a bit more believable to me. Of course, these leaks and rumors do change a lot throughout the year. So if we want to know the most dated and the most inaccurate leaks on the next generation iPhone, it's the ones that are like a year before the actual actual launch takes place, but hey, we only got 11 months to go, so these could be somewhat accurate. End of the day, nothing too surprising here, but I figured I'd keep you guys in the loop so you know that yes, Apple does want to bring 120 hertz to the iPhones. It was likely supply chain reasons that prevented them from doing that and Samsung not able to build enough at scale. Yes, they can do it for their own phones because they don't sell as much as iPhones do, but hopefully Samsung is able to scale production so that they can actually achieve those great refresh rates that we expect on the iPhones next year. And if you like those pro camera features, of telephoto and ultra wide and all the great perks that the 11 pro and soon the 12 pro will offer those camera features being brought to more affordable iphones next year as well i'm sure this will be the first of many and we'll flip flop back and forth on another year of leaks but there should be significantly less to talk about as 2021 is definitely going to be a minor incremental upgrade year but are you guys waiting for 2021 or are you picking up an iphone 12 in just a few weeks feel free to let me know this is your apple sheep here i'll see you in the next one